Interestingly, these recordings tie in really well with a, a theoretical biology paper which I published a few years ago. And this paper Hello everybody, I would like to show you a really unusual fish today and this is Philodichtus leukotenia. So let's get the name out of the way. Sometimes this is called an engineer blenny or an engineer goby or a convict goby, but it's actually neither a blenny nor a goby. But it, it's within its own family of fishes where there's only this species. So highly unusual fish. Now, what is so unusual about this fish? The fish lives as juveniles in a dense school and these dense schools hover above the substrate and feed plankton and that alone is not so unusual but what they do then the juveniles they will converge into the burrow which is dug by an adult fish and then they will regurgitate what they ate into the mouth of the adult so the juveniles feed the adult there is a division of labor between the generations in this uh, highly unusual fish. So what we have here, what I filmed here, and again, thanks to my dive buddy Matt for finding this unusual fish. This is in secret corner, Darwin, Negros Island, Philippines. And this is a very young adult. So here we have a close up, this fish, is just at the transitional stage. So the juveniles are about you know, two, three, four centimeters long. They actually look like free swimming gobies. The adults really look like kind of a blunt headed murrel. And that's what we have here. So this fish was probably 15 centimeters long, just at the beginning of the adult stage. And interestingly, it also showed behavior which was at the transition of the juvenile to the adult stage. So it did not hover in midwater in a school. It was on its own. It was in the substrate, but it did not have a burrow yet. So it almost seemed to me that this fish was looking for a burrow. There were a couple of you know, candidate crev crevices which it looked at, or uh, possibly it was looking for a more apt type of substrate to build the burrow. So a lot of these burrow building fish are very specific in, you know, what kind of substrate they want to dig in. So, you know, highly unusual fish. You can see the sensory papillae on the head of the fish in these close-ups. Uh, this is an animal which we don't see very often and particularly I've never seen it in this transitional state. We routinely see the juveniles. The juveniles uh, in, in shallower reefs and in these rubber areas, they are relatively common. Interestingly, also the juveniles are somewhat of a mimic of the poisonous, of I should say venomous, lined catfish, Plotosus lineatus, and I've on a few occasions seen the adults, but this again was the first time I've seen the sub-adult. Interestingly, these recordings tie in really well with a, a theoretical biology paper, which I published a few years ago. And this paper is called, Why are there no eusocial fishes? Now, what's eusocial? So if you think of a ant colony, or beehive or termites. These are animals where reproduction is monopolized to a few individuals. So there's social specialization of reproduction. So a division of labor that only the kings and queens reproduce and the worker ants and, and the worker bees don't. So this is actually quite a common thing. This happens in a lot of insects. There are spiders doing this. There are shrimp which do this. And there are even a few species of mammals, uh, the naked mole rats in East Africa, which live in such a way. So there's such a high diversity of fish reproductive systems. And the question I asked, and so this is a purely theoretical paper, where we'll look at the existing literature and then reason from there, 
is why is there no such a U social system in any known fish species? And the conclusions I came to is that this is because of the particular properties of aquatic habitats, particularly of marine habitats. Now, what are these particular properties? So, large pulses of resources, like there's all of a sudden there's a big dead rat which the ants can, you know, devour as a colony. That really doesn't exist in aquatic ecosystems that much. This seems to be a result of a lot of ecological research. The distribution of perturbations in aquatic ecosystems is different. So there's less stability on a long-term uh, time span, basically. So generally, if there is a, a large perturbation, it would uh, annihilate uh, something like an, a beehive or an ant colony. So if, if these large perturbations are more frequent underwater, this would be less beneficial for uh, creating new social uh, colonies, new social social structures in fishes. And finally, it seems that new sociality is more common when the when relatives, close relatives, siblings, or cousins, or you know, close relatives to some degree, end up in the same place. So essentially cockroaches which ended up in the same rotting tree became the, the founding evolutionarily for termites. This is quite well established. So this happens much less underwater because in a lot of fishes lava are dispersed by currents um, for tens or even hundreds of kilometers. So there seem to be very clear physical uh, constraints which make it less likely that there is eusociality underwater. So when I wrote this I speculated which fish species could actually give rise to eusociality and I speculated that the cichlids in these African rift lakes which are extremely diverse and extremely diverse in their reproductive strategy that they would be maybe on the way or that there might be deep water um, undiscovered species which are having such an eusocial uh, reproductive strategy. And there are actually a few species which have uh, breeding strategies which are cooperative at least. So they are individuals which help a breeding pair to defend their nest. So th this is what I was speculating. At that point, I did not know yet about this convict fish or, you know, engineer Blenny or Engineer Gobi, whatever you want to call him, which of course, as I've pointed out, is neither Gobi nor Blenny. And it seems that this would probably be the closest candidate to having a uh, new social system of uh, reproduction with these juveniles feeding the adult. And uh, there would be uh, this would be a great candidate for a fish which is on the way. Highly interestingly, recent molecular phylogeny, so where scientists were sequencing the DNA of these fishes and then looking at what are the closest relatives, they make these engineer gobies, or, you know, convict fish, uh, look like as if they're really close to the cichlids. So this is a, it's a very curious fish here both in terms of its behavior as well as in terms of its uh, supposed relatedness to the cichlids, which are also fish with very curious reproductive strategies. So I hope you enjoyed this footage. I hope you enjoyed this slight excursion into theoretical biology. And um, yeah, tune in next week. Thank you.